Welcome to this first video where we will get into PyTorch Lightning. Um, we're going to be building off the last video where I introduced the starter code, uh, which is a very simple, fully connected neural network training on MNIST. But don't worry, what we do is going to generalize to other projects, uh, but it simplifies things so that we can introduce the functionality of Lightning. Uh, and in this video, we're going to start really simple. Uh, we're just going to introduce one functionality, which is the Lightning module. And then we will build on that. Um, so each sort of tutorial will build on the, on the previous one. Um, but, you know, so we're going to start off right now. And uh, what we're going to do, first of all, is create our environment. So we'll do conda create and I call it lightning tutorials. Uh, and it already exists. I'll just overwrite it. Uh, then we'll do conda activate lightning tutorials. So we're just going to install PyTorch, first of all, uh, just copy paste it from their website, you know, the normal installation. Uh, in this case, it's the latest stable one with CUDA 11.7. Okay, so after you've installed that, um, all we're going to do is pip install PyTorch Lightning, um, and then we're good to go. So let's clear this, and let's copy the previous folder into something called uh, Lightning Module, which is going to be what we focus on uh, in this video. So we'll do, uh, you know, we'll open that up, the full, simple, fully connected uh, file. I mean, if you use VS Code or whatever. Um, so we're going to open that up. And the thing we're going to do uh, first is we're going to import PyTorch Lightning as PL. So what we're going to try to do in this video is try to replace this thing here. And basically, we're going to use something called a pl.lightning module instead. So we're going to, uh, you know, here I have Copilot as well, trying to autocomplete stuff. So sorry if that's annoying. I'll, I won't use it too much. Um, but uh, so we'll step through it um, as sort of one step at a time. But so let's just call it NN because we're going to do, um, we're going to sort of replicate the previous one. And we're going to inherit from pl.lightning module. Now, what uh, PL Lightning module does is pretty much as basic functionality is the exact same thing as uh, NN module. So it inherits actually from NN module and it simply introduces some additional functionality. But as it's sort of the most basic building block, we're going to um, use the exact same as NN module. So what that means is we're going to, uh, you know, just input the same thing. We're going to do super. We're going to initialize our linear layers here, and we're going to define our forward exact same as above, right? So now, actually, we can, uh, if we kind of activate our environment, we can we can run this, and it's going to install the data set. But then you're going to see that it's going to run, and it's going to run from this now, right? Because it's the last one that we defined. But now we haven't really done anything, right? It's just a copy of the and in modules. So uh, the additional functionality that it has is, first of all, the training step. So we'll do training step. And here we will send in self, batch, and batch index. And so first of all, you know, what are we doing here? So what does the lightning module do? Well, it's going to integrate with something called the uh, sort of the trainer, which is what we're going to do in the next tutorial. So we're going to build on this. Uh, we're not actually going to utilize this functionality now, but we'll implement it so that you know how it looks like and how it works. Uh, but we won't use it until the next tutorial. So uh, what we're going to do now is implement the training step, which is basically what we do here, right? So we're going to implement one training step, which is what we do here, right? This is one training step. We take one batch. We reshape it. We produce, uh, compute our scores from our model. We compute our loss. We do zero grad backward step, right? All the ba uh, normal stuff that we do. But now uh, we're going to do that in the training step. So instead of uh, writing it down there, we're going to replace that later on. So here we're going to do x and y. We're going to take x and y from our batch. And the next step we want to do is run the forward method. But before we do that, we need to reshape it. So we'll do x dot reshape, x dot uh, size of zero, and then minus one. So this will make it to 784. You know, uh, when we flatten the 
um, the matrix, the MNIST image. So then we'll, what we'll do is we'll run our forward method. Now what you can do is you can just do self of X because the call method in NN module runs the forward method. Um, so this will work. Uh, for some reason, I just still like to do self dot forward to specify. It makes it a little bit clear, clearer, I think. But uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. So when you've computed the scores, we're going to compute our loss, which is F cross entropy. Uh, and then we're going to return the loss. So this is what we do in one training step. Notice here, though, is that we didn't need to do uh, the zero grab, the backward, or the step. So this is going to be taken care of for us. So all that we need to do here in the training step is do sort of one step, what we need for one step. And you could also here, for example, you could do self.loss function equals n and cross entropy. And then you could do loss equals self.loss function. You know, it's entirely up to you. Now, what we want to do also, this is just for a training step, but our validation step and our test step might be different. Right, the, especially when we're going to introduce metrics. So we're going to do that in a future video. Introduce metrics so that we can uh, integrate, uh, you know, sort of accuracy and and all, you know F one score or whatever. Um, and that might be different depending on your uh, training and your validation data, how you want to do that. So we'll do uh, our validation step. In this case, it's going to be the exact same thing, right? It's going to be like this. Uh, exact co a copy paste and it's going to be um, also the same for our test step and you know I'm showing you this because in general that might not be the case but uh, now we're going to do the exact same and most likely they're going to share some common steps right but it might be uh, I think it looks a little bit ugly to have copy pasted code like this so I like to just do a common step um, where we basically take this right here and we return the loss. Uh, we're also going to return the scores and the Y um, just um, so that we have them. And then in the test step and all of the other ones, we'll run the common step. I think it looks a little bit better like this, um, but it's not needed. But yeah, so we'll do it this way. It's a little bit cleaner. So now we have our common step and we're running that in the training step, validation step and test step. Um, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do configure optimizers. So here you're going to return the optimizers uh, and you're going to uh, set a learning rate and then you send in self.parameters. So usually you do self.mod or model.parameters here, but now since it's included in the module itself, we just do self.parameters. And let's see, so I'm not missing anything here. Um, another thing, and I'm going to do that in a future video, is in the configure optimizers, you also, if you want to use a scheduler, that's also where you do it. But uh, we're, we're just going to take it one step at a time, right? So now uh, we have all of the stuff that we need. Notice that we're not actually using anything yet. Um, so this right here is just extra code that's unnecessary at this point, but it's going to be really useful in the next video where we introduce our trainer and it's going to simplify the code a lot and uh, you're going to see the difference. So that's the first. Another thing is, you know, there are more stuff you can do. This is just sort of the basic basics. But what you can do, for example, uh, is introduce another, um, which is training epoch end. So here you might want to take all of the outputs that you get from uh, sort of the intermediate in the each of the steps during the epoch. You might want to take all of those outputs and, and compute some metrics uh, or, you know, compute maybe the average loss during the epoch instead of just getting the loss for each uh, average or, or sort of for each batch. That's something you can do here. Uh, and there's a, a similar function for validation e uh, epoch end and so on. Go to the definition of the lightning module and we can look at some more of the functionality here. So one really uh, important function is log. So we can um, 
you know, we're going to get a progress bar um, from from when we use our trainer, and uh, we can log things in the in the Lightning module, uh, and we can also send those to you know TensorBoard, which we're going to do in in a future video. Uh, but these are sort of just uh, one thing uh, you can do. And uh, we'll add that as well. So actually, we'll we'll add this, and sh I'll show you how you can uh, log things. Uh, that's one important. And then you have some additional how often you want to log. Do you want to log on step or on epoch, uh, and so on. Uh, you also have a log dictionary if you're going to log multiple different metrics. And so you log a dictionary of values at once, and you show them here. So you have values. Maybe you want to. Uh, do your loss, your accuracy, and a bunch of other metrics. You can just log those uh, directly. All right, and then you have your forward, you have your uh, training step, which we already looked at. You have training step end, so you could do something at the end of a training step. Also, you have the training epoch end, you have validation step, validation step end, right? Uh, similarly as the training, validation epoch end, uh, test step, test step end, test epoch end. Uh, this is also one important function. You have the predict step. Now, here you sort of do, uh, let's imagine you have an, one example or a batch. You might want to do, how do you do a predict which one it is? Um, so in this case, you know, you look at the output no, uh, values that you get. You take the argmax of the node, and that's your digit for that, uh, for that image. Um, you might also want to do other things in the predict step. Maybe you want to add test time augmentation, um, you know, whatever you want to do. You can define the predict step, and then all you can do later on is just sort of pr dot predict on your uh, inference uh, that you want to do. So this is also one important thing to keep in mind that you can do. And, um, and then we have the configure optimizers. So you... Uh, you know, you can hear they have an example. You do optimizer one, optimize if you have multiple optimizers, if you have multiple schedulers, you can um, you can return them by doing, yeah. So if you want to do it this way, you actually, it's a little bit uh, clunky here maybe, but you return in this case uh, two dictionaries with the first optimizer, the first scheduler, and then another dictionary with the optimizer and the scheduler uh, two. But uh, yeah, I'm basically you don't have to worry about that. But all I'm showing you is that there are some additional functionality. Most likely, what I'm showing you here is what you're going to use. But when you're sort of when you need to have more flexibility, you know where to look. All right, so uh, we can also do. Let's see. I wanted to log also. So let's do self dot log. Right. That's a function we can do. We can do a train loss, uh, and we can log it. Can also do the validation. Can also log the test loss. Um, we can also do our predict step. Um, predict step, right? We're not going to do a data loader index here. Just this, and then uh, let's see if it does the right thing. So we do x and y equal to our batch. We reshape. We do self dot forward, but then we need to take I think an argmax. Yeah, of the dimension, and then we return our prets. We'll check this later on and make sure it works. So that's the basics of the Lightning module. Uh, we're going to see how it integrates with the trainer in the next video. Hopefully, this was uh, clear and to the point. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.